Hey you guys, hope you're doing fantastic. I am so excited to show you these really funky, cool looking squashes. It's actually grown here on its third year. That's right, this squash is a perennial. So that's super cool, especially if you live in zones uh, eight and up where it doesn't get a hard freeze, you can definitely overwinter them and it'll just keep growing and growing and growing. This vine is so prolific so we'll talk about how to grow them of course i'll pick it and we'll try it out they are the squashes that are right up there this vine can grow up to like 30 feet you know from all different directions the squash is native to central america mexico eats a lot of that so does guatemala and then slowly expanding to uh, in costa rica africa asia even cultivate them the aztecs and mayans actually grew a lot of these so technically this is a fruit, but we treat them more like a vegetable because they go really well in your savory dishes. It's really sweet when you cook them up well, especially if you roast them um, or you know do like a stir fry with them. It really brings the, the sugar out of the squash. Otherwise it would have a little more of a bland tasting. So that makes it really great for like pickling them or slice them thinly and put them in your salads to eat them fresh or raw. Or you can cook them, such as putting them in stews, soups, uh, stir fries, uh, roasting, grilling them, you know, it's just so versatile. Now I'm standing under the chayote vine. Also the lufa is growing in right now. They are sharing a trellis that, by the way, I've put these up on like using just sea bite clamps and they snap on and they're staying on around their third year. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Like I said, chayotes can be really prolific. One plant can get you hundreds of fruits, but I purposely don't trim them to get hundreds here. Especially, like I said, this vine is sharing a trellis with the loofah. Also, the yam is growing in, you guys. The purple yam is slowly climbing in and it's gonna be like three different vines on this small little space. And um, let's just see how, how long the the chayote will carry on growing because the weather is warming up. This vine likes full sun, but it does not like the heat. So providing a little bit of that shade really helps to extend the growing season. Once like 90 degrees kicks in, usually this vine would die back. Ideal temperatures for the chayotes to fruit is in the 60s to about uh, high 70s or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So they do prefer a bit of a cooler, very comfortable temperature. That's why they tend to grow really well for me in, um, in the fall, they start picking up growth again and then they die back in the summer. This summer, however, has been really interesting. Uh, it's been putting out more fruits than usual at this time. Usually at this time, you know, when it hits like 90 plus degrees, it would slowly start to kind of like die back and then just allowing the lufa to take over this vine. However, I think I got like a Brazilian orchid growing out there that's giving it some nice indirect light. So I think it is giving, providing a little bit cooler temperatures above the trellis for the child day. If I prune the branches, the child day might slowly recede and then allowing the lufa to come in. Uh, so you can definitely create your own, you know, microclimate in your space to make it more hospitable. Uh, for your plants. Chayote is in the gourd family, which is related to cucumbers. I can see the similarities that cucumbers, you can eat them as a fruit or in your savory dishes and so can, you know, the chayotes. So there's actually two, uh, two distinctive varieties of chayote. There is the smooth variety and the prickly variety. The smooth ones are usually, I see more like in Asian markets, um, probably just easier to handle, you know, more friendly for your, when cutting and peeling the skin and all that. Uh, whereas the prickly one, there is a technique how you can go around removing the, the, the spine and I'll talk about how to do that later. But yeah, the ones that are more prickly, you usually see them more in like a Mexican markets around my, uh, this area. The green ones are more common, and the white ones, I heard that in Costa Rica, they cost three times more than the green ones. So that's really cool how these ones actually turned out white. A quick little background story on this is actually really funny. A few years ago, I was given this fruit and it's a, it was a spiky green chayote. Grew it out and it, it fruited this yellowish, creamy white color. 
and took that fruit and grew it out two more times and it still came out this this yellow creamy color i just have to keep growing this even for like the, i guess for the genetics <laughs> so let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever seen this variety in this shade since there's a smooth variety and the prickly one the smooth ones you can eat them when they're bigger and actually when you don't want them to be way too mature actually because then it gets a little fibrous when it gets closer to like the seed in the center now usually people would extract the seed but that but the seed is actually edible it's just that when the the fruit gets too big gets more um fibrous and are a little more hard so it's kind of un unpleasant to eat but if you pick like a younger fruit you can eat the whole thing in fact you can even eat it with the skin on i find that when you cook them with the skin the it takes a little longer to cook it but at the same time the skin somehow seems to keep the fruits or i guess the squash um, less mushy when you cook it for a long time when it comes to the prickly ones the market usually sells them more mature like larger ones and the spine is actually really tough like hard on your hands the advantage of growing your own is that you can pick them at any stage you like so every fruit is basically like custom to your liking right especially with the prickly ones usually the grocery store would sell them you know the fruits are bigger they're more mature they're just more lovely to to see and they weigh more uh, however they are harder to handle when it comes to the prickly variety so growing your own would allow you to pick them at a younger stage that's what i like to do is yes the fruits may be a little smaller but it doesn't really matter especially when you grow you have, like probably have lots of it right but the smaller ones the spines around the fruit will be a lot softer than the mature ones the more mature they are the tougher the sharper the spines are therefore just harder to handle The way to grow this is really interesting. It's nothing like your regular fruits or, or gourds. You know how you, gourds you usually wait for them to dry to extract the seeds. Well, this one, the entire seed, it's like the embryo is wrapped inside this fruit. So you don't cut the fruit open to get the seed out. All you do is find a very mature fruit. You would see it would start showing a little sign that it wants to sprout that's actually a really good time to pick it or if you want to buy them at the grocery stores you can uh, find a more mature one like that to grow them so the entire thing is like a seed you just plant it in the soil and let it sprout this plant does not start fruiting until at least like they're four months mature before cutting this open let's talk about how to get in the sprouts because if you live somewhere cold you definitely want to get a jump start by getting them to sprout indoors now what you want to do is to first find a mature fruit you can pick up at like a farmer's market or maybe a grocery store and just find one that's large and kind of heavy especially when you see like this area the back side well this is kind of like a pear shape right so this is where the stem is attached to but the other end is where it would sprout from so sometimes there's some more mature ones you'd find at the grocery store they would actually start see you'll see a little bit of that that green you know that early stage of life start kind of peeking through this back side so you want to pick something like that a very nice plump uh, a large one usually would mean they're more mature as well so pick that and then you can get started now to get them to sprout what you want to do is to create a warm humid environment for them to um, encourage germination so you can either take a bowl of water and kind of soak this in just to really to get it wet you don't even have to soak it for like a minute or two you just dunk it in to get it wet or you can just mist it with some water with a spray bottle or something and then put it in a sealed baggie or a plastic dome just to trap the humidity 
and just leave it in the dark. When you see this start sprouting in about a week or so, take it out of the baggie and then you want to plant this in soil. You can put this in a little container. Keep this in mind, we are still doing all of this indoor right now, okay? Because it's winter, it's gonna be like really cold and you're, you're getting a jump start. So get a little container. You're gonna plant this with half of it exposed, like being above ground. Imagine if this is the soil line, you're planting this like halfway up. Obviously with the sprout at side pointing up and the roots down this way. Then you can keep the soil moisture a little bit moist, just lightly moist, not too wet because it's going to be too much moisture and it's going to cause this to rot. This in itself is already full of water so you don't need any extra until, ouch, just got poked, until you get, um, as long as there's more roots starting to ascend down, you can increase watering because you're by that time you'll actually be feeding um, the roots water you can either put this container in a bright space with a little bit of humidity like put it back in a, like a humidity dome or put it back in a plastic baggie for like about a few days until you get a couple of leaves going the humidity would only speed things up, so you don't actually even have to put it back in a bag if you don't want. Once the soil temperature outside reaches about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, it is definitely workable. It is time to transplant these. So they are actually a little cooler temperature, kind of a, a squash compared to your other squashes that you grow in the summertime. And for me, being in the mild winter, it doesn't freeze over here. So I have the advantage of just planting this directly in, in the ground or in a large container that it's gonna basically be its forever home. Once you start seeing more roots come out, that's when you can increase watering. Now, once the fruit starts extending the stems out, imagine this is in the ground. Once this starts sending up these, these main stems, it's gonna be like, many of them that keeps coming up like from time to time it's gonna be like a few that shoots up and what you want to do is just to keep a few main ones and then whenever there's new ones that pop up you want to snip those off of the the base on the main uh, stems you can trim off the ends like about uh i don't know six inches or so that's actually a really good and tasty in a stir fry. So you can definitely eat the young shoots. The old ones are edible too, but super fibrous and tough. So usually you just eat the, the little parts that you trim off. So once you trim off the ends of it, it's kind of like when you're growing basil, right? You top off the, you know, clip off the top. It encourages side growth. The same goes for the squashes. You cut the tips off, it's gonna branch off more and each new branch comes out I mean each new branch grows and then you want to snip off the ends of uh, those branches as well and then that would encourage those stems to branch off even more and you just keep it'll just keep going that way that's how you would get one plant to produce many many fruits for me even though I tell you how it's done I don't do it that way because like I showed you earlier one trellis is um, there's three different types of vines that are sharing this trellis so I don't have that kind of room to grow like a hundred of these but I actually just have one plant growing in here <laughs> so that is how you prune a chayote make sure you have a trellis or wherever you want it to climb have it ready because this vine is very fast growing all right let's cut this open and take a look at the inside this is a younger one so it's so much easier to work with when you eat it well there's this little see that stuff that's oozing out that sap is really um, drying for my hands I find some people with sensitive skin would actually find it irritating so you can put a glove on to work with uh, or if you can rub a little bit of oil on the hands to prevent it from sticking to your hands because once it sticks to your hands personally it it sticks to my hands for days where I feel like something that's like latching onto my skin for days and it just feels really really dry and like pulling on my skin so you can either work with gloves or put oil and uh, of course don't you know don't oil the hand that you work with the knife but oil I guess put oil on the hand that's touching the, um, the squash I'm not doing any of that right now because I'm just 
cutting it to show you. But if you want to take the skin off, you can do it that way. But I find that the skin is not too tough at all. I can just eat it. Let's see, so you can actually cut it flat and just slowly remove the spikes. Let's cut one piece. Mm. It's lightly sweet. Probably better to rinse a little bit in water to get rid of that that sap or a little, I don't know what you call it, dry mouth kind of a taste. But like, they said that the white ones actually have less of like a vegetable kind of flavor compared to the green. That's also why they cost a little more, I think, and it's just more rare. I mean, this is like probably a recessive gene. Taste, it's a little more like zucchini, I wanna say. And then the texture is kind of like a cucumber. It looks so much like a pear, doesn't it? Well, this is the seed. It would start developing as the plant matures. And then you see that little green part? That's where it'll extend the the plant out this way. If it gets too prickly to work with, you can just put a towel to hold, or you can have maybe your leather gloves for your cactus or something. You can put some gloves on. Just remove that prickliness. Oh, that's fine. Some people would kind of like Cut a little flat part at the end here to put the entire fruit up this way and I guess that would actually be easier. Either way works. It would be easier if you just took a whole fruit and just cut the bottom part a little flat give it a little base to sit on or stand and then peel away. It's just that I usually don't pick them that mature that I have to do this. The reason I peel this is because it's prickly from a kind of like a mature fruit. If it's one that's like completely soft like this, prickliness is actually really soft. It doesn't even hurt my skin. In that case, I would just eat it with the skin. Let's cut a slice of the more mature one and see how it tastes. Still pretty sweet. Maybe just a tad firmer, but not much of a difference because this is still a pretty young one. So when you pick out one to buy or to pick to eat, you definitely, well, I personally prefer the younger ones. I think they're a little sweeter and they're they're easier to eat they're more crispy otherwise they just get really um they'll get more tough and more fibrous the more the fruit ages mm. i think the funnest part about making gardening videos is that i get to pick things fresh and eat them eat them on camera with you guys hey let me know you guys in the comments below what you are growing right now and if you want to pick up more plants and seeds please go check out my website. I will put that link down below for you. Also now there is a tab that says store on my YouTube channel. Now I'm making it easier for you. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your views. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so and hit the bell button for updates. I will see you right back here in the next video. Bye.